Good morning. Why do we have a stuffed animal up here? It's fuzzy weather. Oh, fuzzy that's weather for fuzzy weather. <laughs> Hey, Kelsey, come back out here just a minute. I forgot to introduce Kelsey. This is Kelsey Yancer. Uh, some of you may have seen her. Uh, she teaches music at the ECC. And she's a vocal coach, right? An Albano's singing teacher. And also, she uses her gifts and talents at another church, usually three, three weeks out of the month. And she's gracing us with her presence here today and is going to agree to serve with us maybe once a month. Awesome. How about that? So God is providing. Praise God for that. Thank you. Also, um, this little fuzzy. I think that's creepy. Fuzzy thing up here. This is fuzzy for Fuzzy Wuzzy Dougie. No, uh, someone did turn this in. So if uh, I think it was someone what? maybe from the special needs class. It looks like a dead stuffed animal. Uh, really, it looks very. Uh, Pastor Brent. It looks, <laughs> forgive it him, looks Lord. Sick. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'll have this if you need it. Remind me how to turn this on. Good morning, congregation. I um, we are in the season of. How many of you uh, had ashes marked on your heads last Wednesday? Let me explain real quickly what Lent is. Um, as followers of Jesus, Lent begins the 40 days moving towards the cross. And it's a season of, uh, we say, Lord, if there's anything in me that you want to change, any, anything in my heart, anything in my life, anything in my values, anything in my motives, I give you permission during this season to change me, to transform me, to change uh, my heart, my life. So Lent is a season that, um, of self-examination, of repentance, of reconciliation where we've been at odds with people. Uh, God may move us to reconcile. Um, as he reconciles through Jesus with us. The first Sunday of Lent always begins with the scripture of Jesus being tempted by the devil in the wilderness. So hear now the reading of, of God's holy word. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended to him. I want to start off by saying God is good. Um, when you're up against the tempter, he will always challenge that affirmation. In order to be able to resist the devil's lives that God is not good, or God's direction and path for your life is not the best, 
or that Jesus is not the way, the truth, and the life, we must be anchored in this truth, in this promise, that God is good how much of the time? We don't say that just as a saying. It is at the very fabric of the biblical concept of God. Now, the enemy's temptation and tactics are this. Subtle lies to block folks from coming to faith in Jesus. Or to convince you and I that God is not good and he's holding something back in his love and care. Or there really is no truth, no absolute truth, but values are simply relative. The tempter would, will especially come in at, at us at times when God's getting ready to do something new in our life or to use us in a new way or to take us into a deeper faith or when we're going through a time of trial and difficulty and struggle, the tempter will come at us or when we're going through a time struggling with pressure to compromise our values or to fit in with a crowd. The enemy's goal is always to knock us off God's path for our lives. Hear it again. The enemy's goal is always to knock us off God's path for our lives. In the Bible, the enemy showed up first in the Garden of Eden uh, at the very beginning of creation, whispering to Eve, go ahead, eat the tree from the tree that God told you not to eat of, you will be better off because God must be holding something back from you. Uh, so go ahead and disobey God. You will be better off. God's not looking out for your best interest. Now, the devil never leaves the scene of creation, but he shows up again big time in this story when Jesus was led in the wilderness, tempting him with compromises that would satisfy his natural desires but take him off track from obedience to God's will for his life and the cross. After 40 days, you know, it's hard to even grasp 40 days of fasting. We're in a culture uh, that Christians don't fast too much food. Um, and uh, there are other cultures, and certainly in the biblical times, fasting was more common to think about fasting 40 days and nights. Um, it says that Jesus was hungry, and the tempter comes to him and states, if you, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Now, when the tempter tempts us, in a time of trial, his purpose is to deceive us and to cause us to stray from God's truth. God's desire in a time of trial is to test us, which means to strengthen our faith. He wants to use this time, this battle, to show us that he's strong enough to get us through any battle any challenge against any giant, any problem. He wants to use us to strengthen our faith where the devil wants to take us off track and for us to lose our faith. When God led the Israelites into the wilderness, he wanted to use this time to show them that even though they couldn't make food or find food or water on their own, they didn't even know what direction to go because they were in the middle of the wilderness. He wanted to show them that he could do it. He could provide for them. He wanted, he could provide water and food. He could lead them. He wanted to strengthen them for faith because he was going to lead them into the promised land. And once they got into the promised land, there would be people of all worshiping all kinds of gods, false gods and, and idols, and he wanted to strengthen them so much in faith 
that when they got to the promised land, they wouldn't be swayed to go after other gods. And in today's scripture text, the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to fast for the same reason. He, the Spirit was preparing Jesus for his public ministry, that is to be strengthened during the time in the wilderness, getting ready for what was about to happen. Now in the desert, the Israelites fell to the tempter's strategy. When they were thirsty and hungry, they complained. They murmured. They doubted God. They wanted to go back to Egypt. Uh, they fell to the tempter's strategy, doubting that God was good. How much of the time? All the time. However, in the test, Jesus was hungry, but he responded to the tempter by quoting God's word from Deuteronomy 8.3. Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The scripture is the explanation of of God to the people of Israel, why he led them into the wilderness. He wanted to show them that they, he could provide for them even when they couldn't provide for themselves. Then the devil took Jesus to the holy city, which would be in Jerusalem, and had him stand on the highest point of the temple saying, if you are the son of God, Throw yourself down. Then he quoted, as the devil does, he quotes scripture out of context or just quotes part of scripture. And he quoted the part of Psalm 91 that says, if you throw yourself down, then you will not strike your foot against a stone because of God's angels. Notice in the temptation that Satan always challenges his identity. If you are the son of, if, if you are the son of God, always trying to create doubt. And I want you to know that he tries to create the same doubt in you and I, whether we're really a Christian, whether we're loved by God, whether our faith is in God. He'll say things, whisper in your ear, if you're really a Christian, you wouldn't have any problems. If you're really a Christian, you'd be like Superman and Superwoman. Uh, you wouldn't ever struggle. If you were a Christian, if you really are a Christian, then you would have always the most amazing testimonies to share with people and show them how great you really are. Now, jumping from the temple would have gotten Jesus' attention, Jesus' attention from others, but it would have promoted self-glory rather than God's glory. And Jesus answered the devil when he said, go ahead and jump and prove it. His answer was this, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Now, again, the context of this scripture is, again, from the Old Testament in response to the Israelites in the desert when they were hungry and thirsty, they began to complain and say to Moses that Moses wasn't coming through, God wasn't coming through. In other words, this scripture reminds us in them that it's God's prerogative if he wants to allow a situation to strengthen our faith but it's not our prerogative to doubt God and detest him. And finally, the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor and said, all this I will give you if you bow down and worship me. The temptation here is God is really holding out on you. And you will be happier and more successful if you follow your own path. 
or you follow the values of the world. The temptation is to do anything to advance your portfolio, your career, your popularity, your success, even if it means sacrificing honesty, morality, integrity, and faith along the way. And Jesus answered Satan, it is written from Deuteronomy, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Again, this context of this scripture from Deuteronomy was when the Lord was preparing the Israelites to go into the promised land. They would have their own homes. They would be able to build their own homes and, and have flocks and they would be able to have animals and wells and vineyards. Uh, he was warning them when they left the desert not to forget him who led them out of slavery in Egypt. He was warning them because when they got into the promised land, not to chase after the false gods that those people that lived there worshipped, not to forget that they were to worship and trust and to follow the one true God. So what is the lesson on this first Sunday of Lent with Jesus being led by the Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days? Throughout all of biblical history, the tempter has been around trying to knock God's people off track. He's still around today. He is the father of lies, he is the deceiver. He is the adversary. He does not come at you in a way that you would know it was him. He will whisper. He will be subtle. He will seek to deceive. He comes at us at some of the most vulnerable times, either when we're going through a trial or maybe when the Lord is getting ready to do something new in our life, or to use us in a fresh, new way. Satan's purpose is always to tempt us to doubt God's goodness. And his plan for your life is always the best. He will always get you and I trying to tempt us to doubt that God is good. On one hand... On the other hand, God's word tells that, God, that God's nature, his provision for us, his plan for us, and his path for us is always good. Today's account of Jesus in the wilderness reminds us that it is during the times of trial when the tempter is trying to strip our faith. God's intent, on the other hand, is to strengthen, to deepen our faith. In his goodness that never changes and we can stand and need to stand on the firm foundation that God is good all the time. 